I think we got this place to ourselves. Another bonus to coming out in the fall, especially when there's rain in the forecast. Ooh. Still raining. Oh, hey everybody, Syntax77 here. Pretty excited right now. About to do some fall backpacking in an area I've never been with some gear I've never used. I'm actually about to do a 24 mile loop hike, lollipop loop hike, called the Loyal Sock Link Trail in Pennsylvania. And over here I got my pack. I'm gonna do some hammock camping. Got about a 10 pound, a little under 10 pound base weight. I was under nine pounds, but uh, due to the conditions, I brought a full set of rain gear, and I think I'm gonna have to start with that. And due to my appetite, I actually brought a little uh, aluminum fry pan. Uh, we'll get into that later. Try to do a little cooking. I still have my Esbit system, so that could get interesting, but the cool new piece of gear I have, it's pretty much my standard kit for hammock camping, but my underquilt, I was actually at the Mid-Atlantic hammock hang like a week ish ago and that's basically where a group of like-minded uh hammock nerds get together in pine grove pennsylvania and hang out literally but they have a raffle and i never win anything but i bought two tickets and i actually won one of the top tier items so i have a brand new underquilt well actually it's a underquilt protector but it has built-in insulation if you're not familiar with what i'm talking about we'll get into that later but it's pretty cool it's called the sidewinder um, by Simply Light Designs. So I'm pretty hyped to get out and try that because the advantage of an underquilt protector is protection from wind and wet conditions. Usually you just put it over your existing underquilt. This one has built-in insulation. It's kind of all in one. And based on this weather forecast, um, I'd say this would be a good situation to try it in. It's about 50 degrees outside. So not too bad. It's last week of september um but got three days today's monday tomorrow might be thunderstorms i think it's going to rain on and off the whole time but that's okay i got my map here um just show you what i'm doing i'm at the mead road access point for the loyal sock trail and this goes towards something called the haystacks which is kind of a cool water feature that we're going to check out that's the lollipop part of the hike then when I get down here, I have the option to go either way. I'm going to go up on the Loyal Sock Trail around here. I'm going to probably camp around this pond here, Soane's Pond. Tomorrow we'll come around and then down to the Loyal Sock Link Trail. The actual Loyal Sock keeps going. It's a 59.2, I believe, mile long distance trail. But we're going to use the Link Trail to double back and create a loop do the rest of the lollipop and back to the car. At least that's the plan. We'll see. But right now, I think I'm going to grab my rain gear and just get started with that. I got my ultralight uh, rain gear there. The frog togs, they're like four ounces for the top, four ounces or five ounces for the bottom. So I'm going to put that on and I uh, guess I better get on my Gore-Tex sneakers too. The Adidas Gore-Tex shoes. I don't anticipate too many stream crossings, so... Obviously, there's a low top. They wouldn't help with that, but for the wet brush and whatnot, should be good. Already got my jacket on. Just got to swap these to some pants, and we'll be good to go. All right, perfect. We're ready. Put these sneakers back in for the ride out. A couple days from now, grab my GPS. I'll be recording all the track data for those interested. You can download that if you want. I'll put a link in the vid description. Got my spot messenger. Uh, I got light cell phone service so far, but uh, that's probably going to diminish. So that'll be able to tell my wife that everything's okay and where I'm camping. If I don't drop it and leave it, that is. Let's go get this pack. And actually, now that I'm all geared up, it's not actively raining. Um, so I may be able to shed the top layer here, but I'll at least keep on the bottom because i imagine they'll pick up a lot of moisture from the brush and whatnot so here's the pack got my pack cover ready to go just a dutchware argon super ultra light guy i usually keep tethered on there in a stuff sack so 
depending how tight the brush is, um, I may deploy that. But for right now, I'll just keep it off. So I'll lock up the Jeep and uh, figure out which way this trail is. Somewhere around here towards the haystacks. Um, all right, well, here's the info board. So like I said, we're going towards the haystacks right there. Picked up one of these maps. Uh, camping policy for primitive camping. I do not need a permit if you intend to stay no more than one night at any campsite, which is exactly what I'm doing. Two nights, two different locations. Um, if you're staying at the actual haystacks, which I don't plan on, apparently you can do that if you get a permit, which is free, but we're not going to worry about that. Behind the uh, parking loop here should be where we begin our journey. And there's another board, so let's uh, check this out. Yep, looks about right. Loyal Sock Trail. Got the yellow and red emblazoned LT marks that we'll be seeing as we go along. Susquehanna River Birding and Wildlife Trail as well. Campfire notice, all right. Campfire's prohibited in the haystacks, which I said we're not gonna camp at anyway, and Dutchman Falls. I don't believe I'm staying there either. Remember to wear orange in hunting season. Uh, right now I'm just before any hunting season that I would worry about. There's no, uh, next up is archery, uh, but we are a little before that. So I don't have to worry about that um, right now. But if you were coming out a little later than me, uh, keep that in mind. You can hunt here just, uh, you know, as courtesy to yourself and the hunters, throw on some orange if you're doing that. There's our first yellow blaze. Got some road noise over there, but I suspect that will go away. And uh, here we go. Roots and rocks. Looks like Pennsylvania to me. First intersection already. Haystacks. This way. We actually came from up there. So a little bit of descent right out of the gate. And we're going to hang a left here. Look at that, nice and flat there. I don't believe elevation game wise today is gonna to be very um, intense to get to the pond. I think most of our elevation is gonna be in the middle. I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is 24 mile loop total. So probably six today, 12 tomorrow, six the final day. And uh, that should work out well. It's about 11 o'clock, 11-ish right now. Hung out in the car a little bit just to see if the heaviest of the rain would pass, at least for a little bit. And it seems to have. So I got about a little over seven hours of daylight left. It is early fall, so unlike summer, we're transitioning into not just cooler temps, but shorter days. So the strategy has to change a little bit. Mile 59 right there. So I guess we did 0.2 miles so far. I'm a little early for the fall foliage colors. Probably gonna be another week or two at least, maybe for Pennsylvania. But on the drive up, I did see some yellows and some oranges start to creep in. So we may have some of that in store as we go. About a mile and a half in on this logging road. But it does seem like we may be finally turning off. I don't know if that's the original logging road there, but it feels like we finally made our first turn here and we're starting to hit a downgrade. So I think we're finally gonna drop some elevation here and eventually we'll get down towards Loyal Sock River, and that's where the haystacks are. So-called because, well, they're rock formations in the middle of the river, and they look like haystacks, apparently. It is early fall, so I don't know how much the water is uh, flowing, but we'll see.
All right, well, certainly sounds like a river. There's an info board there. Another map. Right there. So we're gonna take a left-hand turn here. And down there you can see Loyal Sock River. And this apparently is the haystacks. Let's go down and check out the water. It's pretty overcast, but not raining, which is nice. At least the rocks are dry. They don't seem to be too wet. Uh. Okay. Oh, nope, they're slippery. <laughs> they are slippery. <sighs> and it is raining. I guess I just was uh, not catching it yet. Must have started again. I was in the woods. It'll probably start to drip through soon. But here we are on the river. Pretty low. I would imagine right now my feet would be ankle deep. But not right now. Yeah, it's not super sunny. It is raining, but uh, not to sound too cliche or whatever, but this is nature. Yeah, doesn't make you wanna necessarily get out of bed and spend three days on the trail when you see a forecast like this, but this is nature and it's pretty cool. And we are starting to get some colors through here, which is nice. Just a little, little touch of yellows and whatnot. Not bad. I'll take it. So we'll duck back in the woods here. All right, well, despite the mist, I'm heating up. So I think I'm gonna tuck this away and uh, probably take a snack break at this point. It's, um, it's like 12.30. Let's see what I have in the snack bag. Probably just some, uh, oh, coconut nature valley granola bars, apparently. But um, this is the area that you can camp if you get a permit. You can't have any fires around here. I think the pond is going to be pretty nice. But I'll definitely hang out here and kind of soak in the sights. And of course, now the rain's picking up again. But that's all right. Finally getting some uphill. First time on this trip. Pretty steep, pretty rocky. I don't believe it lasts that long, which is fine with me because it's wet. And you can see I have my rain gear back on. So like I said earlier, I try not to sweat, but make our way up this, get some elevation back. Pretty mossy rocks. Very pretty. Sound of the rain is nice. And right now, actually, the trees are still protecting me. So maybe I have like a half hour or so before it starts actually breaking through and dripping down a whole lot. Right now, I'm just getting some minor, minor wetness here and there. But yeah, just head up this hill. Looks like I see an arrow there. This look familiar. So remember earlier, I said the logging road looked like it kept going and it was kind of grown in. I would imagine this is it right here. And I did read some people saying you could circumvent the haystacks if you're just trying to book it. So probably could have went straight. You wouldn't have seen the, you wouldn't have went to the river, but you wouldn't have done the up and down we just did either, which honestly was probably only a few hundred feet up and down each way. But just a little food for thought if you're coming out this way. Nice little waterfall there or a trickle of a waterfall so i'm just going to keep going down here a mile or so on in the rain and we've come to a fork in the road a logging road that is we appear to be on some sort of easement because it's posted signs very tightly on both sides but the trail turns here we're going to drop down now and start losing some elevation and aiming for this intersection. All right. Well, at this point, 
we've knocked out the approach part of our lollipop loop so we did kind of a stick down and we're to the loop part now you can go either way at this point you can go clockwise which would be right over there um, in my case I'm gonna go over this iron bridge and do the loop counterclockwise looks like we're gonna bear to the left on this gravel road and then eventually strip off to the right Here we go, back into the woods. Probably the steepest trail section I've had so far at least, towards the end of the day here. Wet leaves, obviously, watch out for that. Cool rock features, but uh, we're just kind of scaling up them and uh, Making our way along. Watching out for the roots and the wet rocks. Following those yellow blazes. All right, it's about 3.30. Got three hours of sunlight left. Been trucking along. According to my GPS, Soane's Pond is close. But I saw a break in the trees here. And look at this, it is wide open. Now, of course, it's a Monday in the fall, but this looks like it's probably a prime spot. It's a little soggy, a little, a little muddy, but uh, I think I see some reflections of water over there. I'm gonna scout around and see what I can come up with. I'm looking forward to getting this pack off, that's for sure. So I think right now I'm gonna drop the pack uh, yeah, that feels good. Hasn't rained in a while, but I kept the pack cover on just to let it dry out as I walk. But yeah, looks like we have a fire pit over here. Some logs to sit on. I do have a little foam sit pad, little half ounce guy from Dutchware that I can sit on. Or Oh, there we go. We got a rock chair, kind of like Dolly Sods. So, oh, let's go over here and take a look at the water. There you go. Sun's Pond. Little dragonfly. Yeah, this is nice. Some sort of activity out there, a little fish or frogs or something. I think we got this place to ourselves. Another bonus to coming out in the fall, especially when there's rain in the forecast. We're looking out right now. Like I said, there is the threat of thunderstorms tomorrow, but we'll take it as it is. So, pretty cool. Right now, I'm just gonna scout around, check things out, see if I can't get myself a little home set up for tonight. All right, that feels about right. I'm set up, I got the Dutchware half wet hammock right here, right by the lake. So in here is my Simply Light underquilt. And I just wanna make sure that I have the dull side with the quilt material outside. I'm gonna clip that on. And I'm pretty good. Now, I'll dial this in. This is my first time ever using this system. I kind of set it up at home uh, just to see what it looks like. But uh, I'll be honest, I haven't slept in it yet. That's okay. But basically, when I get in, um, it is designed so I can lay specifically how I choose in my case, I like to do a right lay, which means my feet are to the right. <laughs> I can already feel the warmth on my back. That is pretty awesome. Feels pretty good, but uh, I am super hungry. So I don't know about you, but I want to eat some food. So I'm going to leave behind the uh, hammock for now. 
although it feels <laughs> very comfortable oh man but uh i am hungry so let's get some food going here let me show you why i brought a fry pan typically when i backpack i bring this cook kit little stuff sack inside pot with a lid paper towels little bag with a striker some matches a lighter my tin for esbit cubes and some esbit fuel which is solid fuel like this in a cube this is actually a pellet tin the bottom as a stand prop it up i also have in my kit a windscreen which also acts as a pot stand so i'll put water in there with a lid but i'm going to try to take this msr pan to make perhaps grilled cheese sandwich butter on the bread already got some new york state cheddar in there can i get a good saute with esbet well we're about to find out because i'm quite hungry gonna try to be patient because i want a good preheat but i don't want too much this probably is not even heat although it's a pretty broad flame well, sounds like something's happening Oh God, <laughs> all right, so maybe I should, uh, let's make a little distance here. It might be actually too hot. Check it over here. Oh yeah, we already toasted the other side. Crazy, all right, so keep it moving, I guess. We're getting a strategy now. Smells good. Blow that out, and the other side looks pretty tasty. Not bad. All right. Uh, yeah. Should have brought some uh, chips, I guess, but let's see what we got going on here. Oh. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Oh man, I'm pretty happy right now. I have some backpacking meals with me, dehydrated ones, but um, I'm gonna enjoy this grilled cheese sandwich. Maybe uh, take a walk around, look at the lake, and uh, I put a tarp up soon because uh, we're lucky right now there's no rain but it is coming we'll get shelter up but in the meantime I'm gonna eat my grilled cheese and uh, kind of take it from there mm. oh yeah that's good All right, well, the rain came on uh, pretty quick. It seems to have passed by now, but that's my Cuban fiber or Dyneema fiber, whatever you want to call it, tarp over top of the hammock. So looks like it might open up again, but we'll see. Either way, I'll be well fed. A little chicken teriyaki. After that, I'll probably hit the hay in the hammock there, get up in the morning and continue this loop.
Good morning, everyone. And it is a rainy one, indeed. Get the bug net out of my way here. Hold on. Slide that back. There we go. It is huh, 7.05, actually. Sun's starting to come up. You see, well, you can't really see, but I'm right by the pond. There's the water there. Although it is very foggy and misty. It's been raining all night. But I'll tell you what. I think I, uh, I think I might be in love with this new underquilt. And I know I didn't show it to you too much yesterday because I was too enamored with my uh, grilled cheese. But this thing is awesome. So when you're in a hammock, you lay on an angle like I am right now. And that gets you a flat lay. If you lay straight up and down, you're kind of like a banana. Um, but on an angle, you can, you can hear me over the rain, uh, you can get flat. And the hammock, um, or I should say the underquilt I have, is also an underquilt protector, which is perfect right now because of the rain and a little bit of wind I'm getting. But the insulation, synthetic insulation, is built right into it and it's on an angle. It snugs perfectly to me. It's awesome. Now the downside of synthetic insulation is that it is heavier and doesn't pack down as much. The upside is it still continues to work in wet conditions and uh, it's a lot cheaper too. I think this whole underquilt protector slash underquilt is like 115 bucks, which if you know anything about down underquilts, that's uh, pretty affordable. But the nice thing about this design is because the insulation is only sewn in on the diagonal area where you're laying, um, it cuts down on the amount of unnecessary insulation. This right up here, if you can see, is uh, just fabric. It's basically like a hammock that goes underneath my hammock and it cocoons it perfectly and the insulation is just in the areas where my body's making contact. So that cuts down on the weight and the bulk. The whole thing is actually 17 ounces, which to put it in perspective, um, this one here is a 3.6 Apex Climate Shield. It's recommended down to 40 degrees. And my first underquilt was a 40 degree hammock gear, beautiful down underquilt, but stock configuration for that is actually the same weight, I believe, around 17 ounces. So even though it's synthetic, the weight is the same as down, and I uh, get the improved performance benefit of uh, water and wind protection. I actually feel it is a little damp right now just from rain bouncing off the ground and hitting it throughout the night because it's been raining all night. Uh, got my pack down here underneath of my rain jacket to kind of protect it. I'm going to get up soon and I'll stay under the uh, Kuban fiber little five ounce tarp I got here which has been keeping me dry. Alright, let's pack away the gear. So this is my down hammock gear bag. This is the top quilt. This is a 40 degree as well. And that's easy enough to pack up. Here's the stuff sack for my new uh, Simply Light Designs under quilt. And it's definitely a little damp. But this is a, um, it's a Dutchware calendared ion is the material right there, the fabric. So it's calendared, meaning that it's basically it's when you take a fabric and you roll it between two hot metal rollers and it gives it that nice finish. That does improve the uh, wind and I believe water resistance as well, but it, there's also a DWR coating on here on the outside to make water bead up and not soak in, which is nice, and it cuts down on the wind too, but it still does breathe, so I didn't feel clammy or anything like that last night, and it's got these little clips on there, so we'll undo that from my uh, continuous loop on the end of my hammock, 
and I'm just running some uh, Dutchware beetle buckles. This is like a composite polyester and another synthetic material. Um, and these little buckles here to uh, adjust the tension. Ooh, and it's still raining. Throw that in there. Hammock is double-ended stuff sack, so this is super easy to do in the rain. I just open one side. And from that beetle buckle, it's nice. It just hooks right on there. So I can undo that, let the strap fall, stuff it in here, super simple. Yep, it's definitely a little damp, just from the mist in the air. The tarp's been doing a great job of protecting me, but it's definitely some blowing mist around, just making everything kind of damp in general. So, red is the head end on this guy, makes it real easy to figure out. And that's that. So, brush him off, shove him in the pack. There's my bee free filter. Just been dipping right into the pond. It's a little hard on it. The pond water's probably not the best as far as um, beating up my filter, but um, it's, it tastes good. But I'll probably clean that out later. And there's my tarp set up so you can see. Um, I actually did the side pullouts just to give me some more space and make this a little more taut for any wind and let the rain kind of shed off of it. But that's been working good. But I'm hungry. I think I am gonna I think I am gonna make some noodles before I head out. Udon noodles. I've never tried these ones before. Like it has a little vegetable mix, dehydrated vegetables in there, and a flavor packet, of course. There we go. Next thing you know, it'll be noodle time. All right, let's try this out. This is in honor of my friend Mike. Spicy seafood soup for breakfast. Doesn't sound like something you might go for, but uh, smells good. A little udon noodles, carrots, seaweed, onion, red chili pepper, a bunch of fun stuff. I got my gear under the uh, tarp, but I kind of realized that I got full rain gear on as much as I didn't want to have to bring it. Um, it's pretty awesome once you have it on, especially with the Gore-Tex shoes. Uh, I can pretty much just sit here and uh, not worry about the rain at all. Mmm. A little spicy. Oh, yeah, it's a little spicy. Yeah, that's tasty. So, this will get me fueled up to get back on the trail. Into the mist and the fog. Pretty good. Neoguri. There you go. This was, uh, I think, a dollar instead of 25 cents. So, I'm really I'm, uh, highfalutin today. Do a little water. Almost got, this is a liter and a half bottle. It's about full, almost. So, I'll squeeze some more water out of the bee free here. Pack up the pack, take that tarp down, and get back on it. not the official way out of the campsite but uh I know it's in this direction somewhere I see a ridge over there <laughs> oh, yep that looks like something yellow marker we're going this way all right another day begins just see how this rain ends up playing out. Right now it's just a bit of a drizzle. But we'll see.
can see a sign here. I wasn't expecting an intersection already. Um, it's only been about a mile, although this thing looks pretty beat up. Rock Run Trail. Oh, Soane's Trail. That looks pretty unused. I would assume it goes towards Soane's Pond, um, perhaps from a different route. But for me right now, just continuing on the yellow and red, the LT, not the long trail from Vermont, but the Loyal Sock Trail. And uh, making our way along. It's a nice morning, that's for sure. The birds are out. The rain's dripping through the trees. But uh, it's not really actively raining and it's not really getting on me too much. In fact, I think at some point I'll probably take this rain gear off, at least the top like I did yesterday pretty muddy but uh yeah i'm heating up a little bit i still have my long sleeve shirt on which i should probably ditch before i start sweating it up took a bit of a left turn here off the ridge and uh, it's getting a little steeper a little rockier you can see the trail down below looks like they're gonna cut us a break and give us a bit of a switch back here some cool rocks over there the rain has stopped I got the rain gear off which is nice and just see if that holds out Seems we've come to our other road crossing here. They do make it pretty obvious where to go around here. Look, they even instead of double blazes, they do these bent arrows. No question of where to go. Not bad at all. Hiking, no horses. That's us. Oh, you didn't think I just brought one, did you? No, sir. I'll tell you what. This little MSR, I believe it's called the Flex Skillet. Now that I have the routine down a little more, well worth the six ounces and change. It's like 11.30, so I'm doing like a early lunch. <laughs> I don't even think I've hit four miles yet. Hardcore hikers would say I'm being lazy right now but I'm okay with that I am enjoying just sitting here in the moss and uh, eating my grilled cheese so that's what I'm gonna keep on doing Then I'll pack up and get back on it but for now a little sourdough a little cheese a little melty goodness melty. All right, we've been hiking a little bit, descending on some pretty wet roots and whatnot. And down here, we've come to what looks like a, another logging road. The trail goes down here. We're gonna descend. This is looking pretty cool. This is actually an area from looking on my um, maps and stuff when I was planning this hike. There's an area up ahead called Ken's Window. I think it's a little area where you can see out. But uh, there's water around here. Very pretty. Originally, I was thinking about camping here. But when I planned the trip out, I decided I would uh, push a little further, but 
does look pretty cool. I'll be honest, you can uh, plan, plan, plan these trips <laughs> to your heart is content. And when you get to an area, sometimes, I don't know, your mind might change. Now, of course, if I do stop around here, <laughs> there wouldn't be many miles today, that's for sure. Um, it would leave her a lot for tomorrow, but I don't know. I'm starting to have an inkling of a feeling that I might switch things up. But for now, I'm just going to kind of feel it out and see where my gut takes me. Keep following these markers and see what I decide. I'll tell you what, though. There are some beautiful camp spots around here. Some more rock chairs down there. Flowing water. I don't know. I may rather hike a lot of miles tomorrow and have a good campsite tonight. See some water features. And I, you know what? Let's at least go look at this. Oh, there's my watch beeping. It's one o'clock. That is super early to stop. But uh, you see the pack coming off. I think, final decision, I think, I think I'm gonna stay here. Well, logistically, what I've done makes no sense at all. <laughs> but you can't say I'm not having a good time. That's for sure. Got my hammock set up, got my little hang time hook right here. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much just lounging, living it up. I'm only, well, actually, I don't even think I'm halfway into this loop. But, I mean, to be honest, you could probably, you could definitely do this whole loop in a single overnight. You know, I pretty much hiked to a spot that I could have gotten to yesterday, but I'm just kind of stretching things out making the trip last a little bit so i do have a nice spot i mean i just was really feeling it this little gully area here i got water right down there i already refilled my water somebody was kind enough to leave some uh firewood over there i'll probably uh maybe collect some more firewood might watch a little program on the hang time hook in a little bit so show you around over here, got the fire pit. Put a little distance between myself and the hammock just so when I have the tarp down, uh, there's no threat of embers coming from the fire and hitting it. On the rock chair, I got my sit pad. And yeah, the water's right down there. So if I go around there and snake down, it's pretty easy to get to. I got my rain gear hanging up. It's actually pretty dry already it didn't take too long a little wet around the bottom make some dinner at some point chicken and dumplings I don't know if I've ever had the chicken and dumplings yet I'm finally going to place another order on packet gourmet and get some uh some of my favorite food from them but well for now we're just kind of getting through that Tomorrow morning, I'll probably hit the ground running, break down real quick, probably get on the trail before sun even comes up, most likely. We'll see how I feel. But that is tomorrow. Right now, well, now it's time to get serious. We're going to do some survival skills right now, how to stay alive and start a fire. Now, I'm going to show you this. Don't feel bad. It's an acquired skill. I mean, even in seer school, they don't expect you to pick this up on the first try. What we're going to do is we have a teepee right here of wood in this pre-established fire pit. First thing you want to do, you should always have two lighters. So your spare lighter, you want to light that lighter on fire. Throw some leaves in there, you know, get crazy with it. Living the dream. All right, so here's my... Uh, Freeze-dried backpacking meal. Let's see how that is. Smells good. Mm. Peas, carrots, chicken, gravy. That is good. I'll enjoy this while it lasts. 
hit the hammock. Start hiking again. Well, here we are. It's a little after six in the morning. And uh, probably got at least another hour before it even gets light. But I got plenty of sleep because it also got dark really early. So I am well rested. Let me break this set up down, get the tarp packed up, and um, we'll get back on the trail. Because in actuality, I think I probably have like 15 miles today to do. Because um, I really didn't go far at all yesterday, but I did like this spot, so that's what I did. But I do have to drive home today, so not much choice to it. Can't camp after a few miles today. All right, break this down and see where today takes us. <sighs> just trying to, even though I got some decent mileage today, trying to still stop and just appreciate randomness. Although speaking of that, unfortunately, one of the downsides to starting your hike in the dark is, um, well, remember I mentioned Ken's window? Uh, I think maybe it's more of Ken's people, <laughs> or it's just the fact that it was dark, but I must have skipped right by that. And I also completely screwed up. Um, Alpine Falls was back there, not too far from where I set up camp. And uh, unfortunately, <sighs> skirted past that too. So if you come up here, that's a pretty good break spot from what I hear, but in my case, I did not see that. Add it to the list if I ever come back, I suppose. At least the sun's out now, and uh, it's still a little dark in the woods, but it's not raining, which is great. I am close to a road. Actually, I'm right on the road, and I believe this is the section where the trail actually goes along this road like on the road for just a little bit. Truck noise is down there. So the road and the trail for, I think it's only like a 10th of a mile or something like that, are the same for a little bit. Still though, nice arrow blazes and it's a very well blazed, ooh, very well blazed trail for sure. <sighs> just wish I had remembered to take that spur trail to the falls this morning, but that's all right. One other thing I wish I had done was pack more food. I guess I was so distracted by the excitement of my grilled cheese that I packed, a couple of, which I'm out of now, that I um, really dropped the ball on food for this trip. I don't know what I was thinking, but um, I have one granola bar and 13 miles to go. <laughs> so, the good news is I'm gonna appreciate that post-hike cheeseburger a ton after this trip, but energy-wise, I'm not doing too great. I know the state park is up ahead. We're gonna go through that at some point. Um, I don't know, maybe they have a vending machine or something, but I think this is our cue here to get off of the road, entering the state park. And where I came from is just state forest, so that's why I was saying earlier, wear orange if it happens to be hunting season. But right now, I think we're gonna drop some elevation and go down, and that should bring us to the visitor center. World's End State Park. Okay, speaking of which, there it is right down there. This trail's gonna go over here, snake around, and then we'll get down. Look at that mist. Not bad. Better than rain. All right, the real question is, do they have any food down there? Loyal sock. Looks like it actually doubles back that way to drop down. This is actually 
pretty steep. Going up this would be rough. Going down it is a little, well, I'm taking it slow, I'll put it that way. Some of these roots are still wet. If it was really raining, like actively, I think this would not be an ideal trail. Uh, but we'll just take our time. One step in front of the other. And carefully see if we can't get down this mountain. Whew. That was definitely the most intense part of the trail so far. Um, probably only lasted a half mile or so, but it was pretty steep. I mean, it was like White Mountains steep. Uh, that was pretty legit. But now we've emerged. So the High Rock Trail is also the Loyal Sock Trail there. And now I'm just going to make sure which way we go. I think we're going over this bridge. The water is pretty low compared to what it could be. Beautiful day though. This is turning out to be the best weather of the whole trip. Granted, I didn't plan on hiking most of my miles on the last day, but it's better than that rainy start we had. <sighs> All right, little road hike. We'll see what's next. Well, this is the visitor center. Ooh, some snakes. Whoa. The Hellbender. I've heard of that before. All right. That was interesting. New food, unfortunately. I was hoping at least for like a soda or something, but maybe not. All right. Let's see, which way do we go now? Probably over here. Yep. That is it. Off the road and back into the woods. There's the familiar blazes. Whew. That sun is heating me up. And we're back up just about to ridge level. Actually, you can see on the opposite side there through the trees. So that was a little strenuous, but basically it wasn't as bad as going down the other stuff. That was a lot more loose rock and stuff. But we are back up on the ridge here. And now it should be a nice kind of mellow woods walk back to that kind of vibe for a little bit <sighs> might even go short soon i don't know i do still have the same pants that i ripped in the adirondacks i have not got new hiking pants yet but that's okay <sighs> but they are a little warm today well i blew a turn at some point apparently just saw a sign it said i'm on pioneer or something and I'm not seeing loyal sock signs anymore so I pulled up my GPS and I was trucking it pretty easy trail and it looks like I blew a turn like a half mile ago started noticing I was following this road a lot which is not part of my itinerary that tipped me off but I was just spaced out listening to a podcast and luckily I caught it <laughs> sooner than later so Let's get back to wherever I made this mistake. Oh, sweet. It was only like a tenth of a mile. It's right here. 
right where I saw the sign, actually. I just went straight. So I actually only lost a few minutes there, which is nice. So we are back on task. And these are some slippery rocks. That's okay. It's about 10 o'clock right now. Um, and I guess we're five-ish miles or something like that. So about a third of the way into this little adventure for today. Still holding off on my granola bar, saving that until I <laughs> really hit a wall. But I'm feeling pretty good so far. a pretty cool little area and definitely am getting some nice colors on this hike now this is my first time on the loyal sock trail so i don't have anything to compare it to but i would say fall is probably the way to go for this hike i mean as you've seen there's no real focal point big vistas uh the most the closest to that we got was that little overlook earlier before we dropped down to the visitor center but for the most part, the draw, the eye candy, if you will, of this trail is the trail itself. I'm really having a good time just kind of immersing myself and walking along through the leaves. It's been nice. Back to the mossy uphill. What was I just saying about a nice walk in the woods? I mean, it's nice still, but it's a little slippery and pretty steep. But it is very cool looking. We're getting away from that road now and gaining some elevation. We are finally gonna leave the Loyal Sock Trail. Remember only doing a portion of it out of its 60 miles. So this looks like a pretty convenient shortcut. I'm about eight miles in right now. Um, eight going on nine, something like that. So I'm also getting pretty hungry. I finally ate my granola bar. I did find a little package of uh, like fruit snacks and there's the little guy that I'm still holding on to. But I don't know what I did. I'm actually, I did notice I don't have my soup. I had soup for today too, another ramen. Um, I think I, I like left a day's worth of food at home. I messed that up. And you know, somebody was actually suggesting to me the other day, I see that you bring just enough food a lot of times and you should really bring, uh, you know, an extra meal. And I was like, you know, that's a good idea. And then for this trip, I did the opposite. Uh, <laughs> I skipped the whole day. Here we go, it looks like it's going over here. So yeah, I'm pretty hungry, but I do have water and uh, you can go a lot longer without food than you can water. So that much I haven't screwed up. All right, let's see what the next intersection is. Ah, skies are still clear. Now that we're off the Loyal Sock Trail too, certainly does not have that well-used feel anymore. Matter of fact, a lot of times, you know, doesn't even look like a trail at all. The best you can do is just kind of spot from X to X, which by the way, I'm assuming now, according to my map at least, my paper map that I picked up, um, I am on the Loyal Sock Link Trail, but you'll notice that everything other than the Loyal Sock Trail it's just marked with these uh, yellow discs with a red X or sometimes <laughs> uh, the bottom of a soup can. But so definitely want to know what you're doing because one X trail looks just like another. Apparently the link I believe is technically X6, but uh, there's no numbers or indications like that. So they have been doing a good job though of keeping keeping these X discs 
out especially here you can see they're within uh, 20 yards of each other so not bad but yeah completely different vibe than oh there's a campsite completely different vibe than the loyal sock trail for sure so my stomach is grumbling but i'm gonna keep on going my spirits are high just keep on following these x's all right it is about noon at this point and we're about 10 out of our 15 miles in and we're getting close to cold run road which is another gravel or dirt logging road kind of deal around here this is actually coming up soon where i had originally thought that i might camp last night although to be honest timing wise in the summer that probably would have been fine i probably would have gotten here at like six something six ish based on my pace but uh for this time of year i mean i would have been here basically right around when it was getting dark so i am not regretting my choice yet we'll see what this campsite is i read mixed reviews on the water source for it also speaking of mix oh there's another can where am i going does anybody see a yellow disc I'm maybe over here <laughs> um what was i saying oh there's there we go there's one down there um yeah we'll see i had plenty of flowing water yesterday that's for sure this here is vinegar run and i think this is it not this but yeah okay it's a bit of a puddle i see some flow so i probably would have been okay yeah, it would have been okay, water-wise. But timing-wise, I really like that spot that I hit last night. So I'm pretty happy with how things are going. And I'm thinking I'll be back to the vehicle by probably 2 o'clock, which is good. I can have a late lunch somewhere, get myself a burger, keep plugging ahead. And yeah, I guess we'll be wrapping this up soon. another road this one actually a real one a highway and you can see we're following the x's a little bit on the road here pretty soon we'll tuck back into the woods so from here on out pretty much just following the banks of the loyal sock river and there's like three spots in here you could camp just keep in mind the road is actually probably 600 feet up that bank there so it's not that far away so a little sketch um, I've never had any problems but you know typically the closer you are to a road the more likely you might encounter some people with you know just looking to party or something but that's why I was thinking if I did the loop the opposite direction I probably would have pushed on to vinegar run back there as my first campsite which would have been about five miles very similar to going the zones pond but that pond was pretty well worth it I'm glad we did it that way oh, and there's the hunter's cabin that I read about right there as well I'm not sure the full story with that but I don't know if that's something you can rent out or what but yeah so this is it soak in the river get back to the stick of the lollipop and uh, keep making progress, getting closer to that cheeseburger. <sighs> oh. Parking lot is empty now. Oh man, a little bit of uphill at the end there. Just to rub it in. Ah, ended up being, I 
it's more like 16 miles today. 16 very hungry miles. Ah, that's okay. Oh, looks like the bathrooms are freshly cleaned. So I'm gonna get this pack off. I am definitely not clean. So I'm gonna clean up a little bit, get on the road and find somewhere that maybe will actually serve my dirty self a little something to eat because I am ready for that. But yeah, that was it. A little threat of rain, but it never really opened up today. So not as bad as I anticipated. Beautiful trail. Like I said, I think this is great for fall. So Loyal Sock Trail gets a thumbs up from me, but right now I'm gonna get cleaned up and replace some calories. So until next time, I'm Syntax77, and right now it's cheeseburger time.